Good evening, faith family and friends, and welcome to the Faith Zone. God has blessed us to enter a new month, the seventh month of 2020. Today has, is July 1st, and we thank and praise God for the opportunity to enter the seventh month of the year 2020. The year is rapidly moving, uh, and we hope and pray that as we enter a new month, that you'll be safe and that you will uh, enjoy the summertime and at the same time practice the restrictions that are in place in our state. Uh, let's pray before we start our lesson for this evening. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to come together. This is the day that you have made. We have rejoiced. We have been glad in it. We thank you for the opportunity to come together this evening. Bless our time together. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is a new month, and also we will be starting a new series, July Bible study series, How to Manage Your Anger. How to Manage Your Anger. There are many people today that are, that are expressing anger for various reasons. Uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement and the civil unrest in our nation and the police brutality and, uh, and all of that. Many people have expressed anger in the streets. Many people are angry regarding COVID-19, loss of job, uh, their businesses may have been destroyed, uh, angry with family members. Uh, some may be angry and disappointed with God over maybe the death or loss of a loved one. And that there are many people today that have a thousand reasons why they're angry. And so this lesson series, we want to uh, let you know that, yes, we all get angry. It's how we manage our anger and how long we hold on to it. And so today we want to start our lesson, uh, new lesson series on how to manage your anger how to manage your anger. So the question would be, how do you usually deal with anger? How do you usually deal with your anger? Do you allow your anger to drive your, your actions? Do you allow your anger to get the best of you? Do you allow your anger to do dumb and stupid things? Do you allow your anger to fester, to last for days and weeks and months and even years? So I hope that this Bible study series will we'll learn some practical ways on how to manage your anger as a Christian. So here's a quote. When you let anger get the best of you, it brings out the worst in you. When you let anger get the best of you, it brings out the worst in you. And anger, if we all, would, if we all are willing to admit, have allow the worst of us sometimes to show. And so today we want to make sure that you are expressing, expressing your anger in a way that it's not going to get the best of you. And so that is important. And so we want to give you another quote. This quote says, control your anger. It is the only one letter away from danger. If you look at the word anger, put a D in front of it, it spells danger. And some of us are living dangerously due to our mismanagement of our anger. You see, anger is a universal problem. It is not limited to one age group. It's not limited to one culture. It's not limited to one race. It's not limited to one ec economic level. It's not limited to one social status or educational background or any other classification. Anger has a way of getting the best of everyone. But unresolved anger is one of the chief contributing factors to the destruction of marriages, the breakdown of families, and the weakening of our communities and we have, as we have witnessed in recent months and weeks. It is a major cause of health problems and lack of productivity in the workplace. When people are angry, they're not going to work. They're going to try to get over 
on their employer. And it is a common denominator among juvenile delinquents. There are a whole lot of juveniles that are angry. Angry because maybe their dad has left them or, have, or they have not seen their dad. Angry because of the present situation that they're in. People are angry. So you might ask, what is anger? What is anger? Definition of anger. The word anger is, is in Hebrew, literally means nose. N-O-S-E. Yes, nose. When one is very angry, he begins to breathe hard and the nostrils begin to flare. A Hebrew uh, sees anger as the flaring of the nose or the flaring of the nostrils. And there's a scripture reference for this in 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 34. The Bible says, So J Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, ate no food the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had threatened him shamefully. Additionally, Hebrew meanings for anger are a boiling over. Provocation, wrath, rage, indignation, anger. Therefore, is an element of punitive or vindictive justice in man. Anger is defined as a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. A less technical definition would be that anger is the strong desire to hurt or destroy someone or something. Did you catch that? Anger is a strong desire to hurt or destroy someone or something. You, s you see, anger is a basic human emotion. And it manifests itself in times when individuals feel stressed, frustrated, or treated unfairly. Anger can also be a response to pain or the threat of injury. For most individuals, anger is related to the stress response, the primal instinct to respond to threats through fight or flight. Never expressing anger can be unhealthy. There are some folks who will say, well, I never get angry. That could be unhealthy, leading to headaches and muscle pain from carrying a whole lot of tension. On the other hand, anger that is out of control can be dangerous. And there are some people that are very, very dangerous. You know some of them when they get angry. They punch holes in the walls. They throw things around. They kick things around. They destroy their own personal property and the property of others. So when anger is out of control, it can be very dangerous. And when anger turns to rage, the, uh, the angry individual may hurt others or they may even hurt themselves. Anger will make it difficult to make thoughtful decisions leading to impulsive behaviors. It is especially important for everyone to learn how to manage anger appropriately. So, the book of Genesis tells us about the creation of our first family. And starting with this family is a good place to begin our Bible study series for the month of July how to manage your anger. So this can, this can help us understand how conflict is created by anger. Most first conflict experiences begin in family structures. So Genesis tells a story about the first brutal clashing that grew into a murderous action, a, murder, a murderous action. So lesson number one, we're going to entitle it The Root of anger, the root of anger. If you have your Bible, you may want to pay attention to the screen. Scripture lesson is Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. 
And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. Did you catch that? And Cain was very angry. Not just angry, but very angry. And his countenance fell. And his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. So let me make a few observations in relation to our scripture lesson. Let me make a few observations in regards to our scripture lesson. Anger ignites bad decisions. Keep that in mind. Anger ignites bad decisions. Many people have made a whole lot of bad decisions because, simply because they were angry. And if they were to allow themselves to cool down, to cool off, and to remain calm, they could have made a better decision, which would have created a better outcome. The story in Genesis explains clearly why God was pleased with the offering of Abel over Cain. Cain brought to God some of the fruits of his work, and Abel brought to God some of his firstborn of the flock. The action of each man's sacrifice showed how they had valued their relationship with God. And let me just step back for a second. Yes, the sacrifices we bring to God is also a telltale sign of how much we value God in our relationship with Him. Our sacrifices, our giving of our time, our worship, our talent of our tithes and offerings. All of that depends on how we value our relationship with God. You see, God was honored by the sacrifice of Abel, but showed displeasure at the attitude of Cain. Why did God accept the sacrifice of Abel and reject the sacrifice of Cain? There are four main reasons that are out there. Bible scholars give four main reasons. Number one, God's sovereign choice. The first view sees the acceptance of one's offering and the rejection of the other as the sovereign choice of God. God merely chose to accept Abel's offering and reject Cain's with no explanation given. The second view, non-blood sacrifice. The second view believes that the offering was rejected because Cain did not present a blood sacrifice. And blood sacrifice is the only acceptable offering God would receive. The third view, poor quality. The third view sees that Abel brought the best of what he had while Cain brought a poor quality offering. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, chapter, Hebrews 11 verse 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. Then the fourth is an attitude problem. 
The fourth view interprets the rejection as a problem with Cain's attitude rather than the specific offering that he brought. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. So these are four views out there in regards to why Abel's offering was accepted and Cain's offering was rejected. Now because of this, Cain's anger towards his brother and God exploded. He just exploded. He didn't punch walls. He didn't kick cans. The intense emotional displeasure of Cain with God and his brother led him to commit murder. Yes, anger, if it's not managed, will cause you to do things and harm people. Fury is a potent force that can tragically influence the behavior of people. When a person becomes full of fury, it is a potent force that can tragically influence the behavior of people. Fury is, def is defined as unrestrained or violent anger, rage, passion, or the like. You see, conflicts between two people such as Cain and Abel also have effects upon third parties. You see, the act of hostility of one man affect an entire family. And often our anger, if it's not managed, not only affects us or the person we are angry with, but even others. So we must be careful how, or we must be careful to not allow our anger to get out of control. You see, Cain's action shows that anger can do several things. One, consume someone. Anger, if you don't manage it, can consume you. That is preoccupy, engross, eat up, devour, or obsess you. And you don't want that to happen. Two, Cain's actions show that anger can destroy rational reasoning. Destroy rational reasoning. One's ability to reason, to keep his mind cool, and to align his thoughts and actions with the facts. You see, every wise man says, play to your strengths, not your weakness. If anger is one of your weaknesses, don't let anger get the best of you. Because it will cause you to destroy rational reasons. You will not have a good head, a calm head to make wise decisions. Three, create massive problems. Cain's actions show that anger can create massive problems such as damaging one's health and personal life. Everyone has had to deal with, with his emotions at one point in life. Cain allowed his intense feelings to take control. And you don't want anger to take control. It took such control that he killed his own brother. This is proof of what anger creates when it is the driving force in dealing with people. It can lead one to murder. It can lead one to self-destruct. Let me talk about the fuel of anger. You see, Cain allowed his anger to fuel bitterness. Anger, rage, fury, leading to bitterness. This behavior grew irrational thoughts. His irrational thoughts led to murder. So in his writings in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul had to deal with negative attitudes. And he gave advice to the early Christians when he wrote his letter to the church at Ephesus. He said this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Deal with your anger while you're up. And about deal with your anger before you sleep and go to bed deal with your anger you see Paul's advice focus on the fact that allowing bad feelings to fester is an unhealthy practice he saw it as such a dangerous practice that he suggests that never go to bed angry did you catch that never go to bed angry 
Don't tell your spouse. Don't tell your children. Don't tell your employer. We're going to handle this tomorrow. I'm angry right now, I'm, I'm, I'm upset right now, and, and, and I'm just out of sorts right now, but we're going to deal with this tomorrow. I don't have time to deal with this right now. Well, you better make time to deal with it if you're full of that kind of rage and anger. He saw that it, the Apostle Paul saw that this dangerous practice tells us we should never go to bed angry. So Paul knew that a person's hatred and the character of a true believer are opposites. Anger can be an all-consuming bitterness that can destroy rational thinking. You do not think well at all when you are angry. And this was the case with Cain towards his brother Abel. You see, healthy people recognize their anger. Healthy people recognize their anger. Individuals who have good people skills have developed healthy practices in dealing with anger. You see, Cain failed in this category. You see, healthy individuals will not allow themselves to indulge immature behaviors like tantrums. Not only do children throw tantrums, but even adults throw tantrums. Spouses, husbands and wives throw tantrums. Children throw tantrums. Employers and employees throw tantrums. You see, these people understand what ignites their rage. Talking about healthy people. They understand what pushes the wrong buttons. You see, solid thinkers do not allow anger to fester. Solid thinkers do not allow anger to fester. A stable person surrounds himself or herself with trusted colleagues who have been given permission to keep him or her in check. When anger shows up, you know, tap me, give me a wink, do something, let me know when, when my anger's getting the best of me. I, I, I don't want I, I, I to make decisions and say things that will cost me later. So, that, so when you see me getting out of control and you see when anger is starting to get the best of me, I want you to check me. Do you want someone to check you when you get angry or do you want to just fly off the handle? And just let it out at that time. What would happen if, if Cain had talked to his mother, his father, or even his brother Abel rather than reacting to his feelings? There would have been a different outcome. You see, anger exploit, 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 anger multiplies, excuse me, anger multiplies the emotions that fertilizes conflict. Anger multiplies the emotions that fertilize conflict. Animosity can nurture feelings to such a level that irrational thinking will grow like a fungus. And so are you a healthy individual or are you an unhealthy individual when it comes down to people skills and dealing with others? Another observation, anger is not cheap. Anger is costly. Did you catch that? Anger is not cheap. Anger is costly. If unmanaged, anger can destroy your most personal and strongest relationships. Many relationships have been damaged. Many marriages have, 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 have ended, ended up in divorce. Many people have parted ways due to anger. Unable to manage anger. Saying the wrong thing at the wrong time just out of control and has damaged the strongest of relationships. And this is what happened with Cain and Abel. A conflict driven by rage can ruin many good marriages and many good friendships. There are some friendships who have hit the road. There are some friendship, friendships that are no longer in existence due to the fact that one could not manage their anger. Mismanaged anger always de demands a price. It can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to sleep problems, abuse of alcohol, drug addiction, bad eating habits, and the list goes on. When anger is not addressed, it can become a consuming emotion as it did with Cain. King Solomon, the book of Ecclesiastes, gives sound advice about dealing with anger when he wrote this, Ecclesiastes 7, 9. 
Be not quick in your spirit to become angry. Did you catch that? Be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the bosom of fools. You, would, you don't consider yourself a fool. The text says, be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the bosoms of fools. You see, anger is something that we all deal with. It can take, it can take control of us, if it's not addressed. For every second we remain angry, we damage our peace of mind. Did you catch that? For every second we remain angry, we damage our peace of mind. You see, God asked Cain three questions about his anger. Why are you angry? That's the first question he asked him. Why is your face downcast? This is Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? You see, the Lord recognized what was in the mind of Cain when he said, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And he failed to do that. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. You see, furious emotions were consuming Cain so much that even a direct conversation with God could not change the hatred in his heart. He had an opportunity to do so, but he was full of anger. The truth about Cain, Abel, anger, and conflict. The truth about Cain, Abel, anger, and conflict. There's some truths that we must understand about anger and how it ignites the fire's of conflict. Number one, Cain showed that anger is a destructive emotion, is a destructive emotion. It is in, it is in part of, it is part of the sin nature in every human. No one has to teach us to be angry. No one has to teach a child to be angry. Just think about a two-year-old you have known in your life who have gone ballistic. No one show that child how to throw a temper tantrum. No one show that child how to act out in the supermarket. No one show that child how to act out in church and embarrass you. Cain showed that anger is a destructive emotion. Secondly, we must know that most fits of anger will not settle down on their own. So if you, tell some per, per, uh, if you tell someone, you better calm down, settle down. You see, rage seems to expand, increase, and multiply with the greatest of ease. The sinful nature grows and reproduces itself. Not only does bitterness grow, but it also becomes overpowering. You see, Cain's anger with Abel was abrupt, brutal, and quick. He murdered his brother. Thirdly, as anger grows, it becomes evident that it does not need much help in expanding. As anger grows, it becomes evident that it does not need much help in expanding. As it evolves, it increases in its ability to burst forth and attack. Anger wants to express toughness, and it also wants to make it clear who's in charge. So when people get angry, they want you to know, I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of this argument. I'm in charge of this situation. I'm in charge of this conversation. But you don't have to be angry to be in charge. That's how anger get the best of us. In closing, the story of Cain and Abel is a quick lesson that shows how the clash between two brothers driven by the negative emotion of one brother, should not be ignored. It is evident that in the eternal battles in Cain's heart and mind drove his actions. Anger does not have to produce hatred. I repeat, your anger, my anger, does not have to produce hatred. You and I must learn how to manage it. And I close with this quote. 
He who angers you conquers you. He who angers you conquers you. Do not allow a person, a thing, or a circumstance conquer you. He who angers you conquers you. Do not allow other people to dictate how you will respond and how you will deal with the situation. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You can manage your anger, take control of the situation with a cool, calm, and collective spirit. This is our first lesson in a series of lessons on how to manage your anger. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I pray that you would help us realize who we are and whose we are and how you have given us the necessary power and anointing and your word to calm our nerves, to calm our inner self when we are upset and when we are angry. Help us to learn how to manage our anger so that we can better manage our relationships, better handle life's circumstances, and walk in victory. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you log off, let me share a couple of things. One, we have entered a new month. Yes, we have entered a new month. Please visit our website. I want you to visit the FCLC website. Check out our July calendar. Go to the website, click on uh, events. You'll look under, you know, click under, click on the calendar and see what's going on for the month of July. You'll see all the dates, activities, and also our marketplace ministry outreach for July, which is donation of dried uh, food, canned and dry goods. So please peruse the website for, for the month of July's ministry activities. Secondly, continue to keep Brother Mike and Holly Andrews in prayer in the loss of his mom and mother-in-law. And the funeral services will be held this coming Thursday, tomorrow, Thursday, in Newark, New Jersey. So please keep Brother Mike Andrews and Holly and the Andrews family in prayer as they uh, celebrate the homegoing of their mother. So will you do that? And don't forget, this coming Saturday is July 4th. Please, please don't, don't, don't get out of control. Obey the restrictions that are in place. Enjoy your family and friends and thank God for blessing our nation for 243 years of celebration. So please enjoy yourself and have a wonderful 4th of July. So on behalf of Lady Caroline and I, we wish all of our families a happy 4th of July weekend. And then finally, remember to honor the Lord with your tithes and offerings. If you have not honored the Lord this week in your tithes and offerings, please do so. If you're giving by way of check, write out your check to Faith Christian Outreach. Uh, write your check out to Faith Christian Outreach Center, and send it to our to the uh, address that's on the screen. If you're giving by way of of the technology, use our Givelify app. Again, we thank you for tuning in. For tonight's uh, Bible study. Please be consistent this month and tune in for all of our lessons that you might grow and develop to be all that God wants you to be. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, FCLC, faith, family, and friends, be safe, be well, and enjoy the 4th of July weekend. God bless you.